Integrity is everything. Our way of life in this country rises and falls on the integrity of our leaders and the integrity of our infrastructure. Because integrity impacts everything, this is the Integrity Podcast. Powered by EXO. Hosted by Zachary Oliphant. Welcome, everybody, back to the Integrity Podcast. I'm Zachary Oliphant, one of the founders and CEO of EXO. A few weeks ago, a colleague and I were chatting about some of the challenges of leadership. And, um, and as we were sitting and talking, we thought maybe it'd be a good subject to um, just to put out to folks. And whether you're a, a young leader or a young mentor, you're an experienced leader, uh, maybe you could gain some insight as, as I kind of struggle through the, the items that, that keep me up at night or the challenges that I have. Um, or maybe you'll gain some insight, make you a better leader. But either way, we thought uh, we'd run through some interesting topics and some things that are front of mind for me as I've um, continued to build out our team here at EXO and, and continue to look for leaders and folks that we want to join our business and help make sure we're putting our business on the right path for success. So let's get right into it. I actually scribbled down some notes so that I could uh, get through these things in some sort of cohesive fashion. Um, and I don't know that I'm going to bring conclusion to all of these topics. I mean, some of these items I'm actually working through today as I try to become a, a better leader. Uh, but you know, maybe the, maybe the first one I st- wanted to start off with is, is this concept of pushing your team. Anyone that's been in a leadership position, whether that's in in sports or with your family or in an organization you're running. Um, and sometimes you're thrust into leadership and, and sometimes you gain leadership through experience and, and hard work and effort. But however you're, you're seen as a leader, you're acting as a leader, you're always trying to balance this, how hard do you push your team? Um, and, and how hard do you push your team before you turn them off? And how do you push in the right way? Um, people react very differently uh, to different leadership styles. There's certainly folks that, that need a kick in the rear end every now and then. Uh, but if you do that to somebody else, you may completely turn them off and, and, and they don't want to have a conversation with you. Um, there's other folks that uh, want tons of communication. Uh, and there's other folks that feel like you're over communicating or they're doing something wrong because you're communicating too much. Uh, this, this is something I struggle with. Uh, you know, our organization is full of a lot of great folks and a lot of great leaders, uh, but each one of them handles my leadership style probably slightly differently, and I probably react to their leadership style slightly differently. And uh, you know, I have found over the years that um, as you're trying to communicate with somebody and as you're trying to interact with somebody, you have to be consciously thinking how, how is this person going to receive the message that I'm about to deliver? Are they going to see it as constructive criticism or are they going to see it as just pure criticism and they're going to shut down? Uh, or is this individual going to see uh, what I'm trying to explain to them as an opportunity to improve in what they're doing? So when it comes to pushing your team, probably the thing I find uh, most valuable is to be a learner, right? S- stop and listen and, and try to be introspective about how you're communicating to folks. How are they receiving the message, right? As a, as a leader, you're going to have to deliver messages and not all of them are, are uber polished. Not all of them are going to come across the way maybe you intend. Um, so you, you do have to take a moment and a pulse to listen and to learn and react to how folks are, are engaging in that message or how folks are reacting to that message. Uh, So I'd I'd implore each of you as you're delivering something, uh, take a moment to read the room or or read the individual that you're presenting to or speaking to um, and make sure it's being it's landing the right way. Uh, And if not, follow up with another question or comment of, you know, are you understanding what I'm saying or or are we aligned on this issue? Uh, I think that will go a long way to making sure that that your leadership and, and the initiatives you're trying to push are landing correctly. I think the next item for me is how do you, how do you create good habits for yourself? Um, as a leader in, in any organization, uh, for me, it's really important to be consistent. Um, and we all go through times of extreme highs and extreme lows. We all go through emotional struggles, whether it's in the workplace or outside of the workplace. Uh, but how do you show up every day and be consistent? And uh, for me, creating good habits like that, consistency every day, Uh, trying not to get too high and trying not to get too low uh, is really important as a leader. Your team's going to follow how you act. 
Um, and if you're a roller coaster every day, uh, certainly you'll probably find that a lot of your team is going to react to every every issue that they're experiencing like a roller coaster. Certainly doesn't that doesn't mean you're not going to run into emotional situations that put you on a roller coaster. Um, I have found for me as, as a habit um, and, and trying to stay consistent, when you run into an item like that that's either stressing you, frustrating you, upsetting you, uh, you really have to take a deep breath and say, okay, you know, well, number one, I can get through this. Uh, number two, I've surrounded myself with a great team that will help me get through this. Um, and, and number three, you know, it's, it's probably not something that's the end of the world, that you can work at it, you can solve the problem, uh, you can loop other folks in to help you solve the problem. And the best thing you could do right now is stay calm under pressure and make sure your, your team is seeing you stay calm under pressure. Um, quite often you'll see folks that when they, when they get under stress and they see those stressors, um, they really start freaking out and they end up making bad decisions. And that's a lot harder to come back from that if you just take a pulse and breathe and think for a moment, quite often you'll find a good roadmap and a good solution to how you can work through those things. The next item that I think a lot about as a leader is accountability, right? Everyone has some degree of accountability in their life, whether that's as a parent, as a spouse, as a coach, as a mentor, or as a business leader. Um, accountability is not easy though. How, how, do you, how do you apply accountability equally? I have the great privilege of working with uh, people that are very close to me, family, friends, people that outside of our organization I'm very close with. Uh, and that adds a whole other layer of complexity to accountability. Uh, I, I, for myself as a leader, I try to come into the workplace every day objectively holding everybody accountable to the initiatives that we've set out as a business. And for me, that doesn't matter if we've got a 10-year history, 20-year history, or a, a lifetime together. Um, we all have to hold ourselves accountable to execute on the key initiatives to make our business better. And this is a slippery slope for me, and I'm, I'm one that draws a pretty hard line around this issue um, because everyone's got issues. I mean, everyone's got stuff going on in their personal life. Um, everyone has things going on in their work life. And so you, you have to find a common ground to say, hey, like, I get that. We all, we all do. We all have great days. We all have bad days. Um, but at the end of the day, we all have to hold ourselves accountable. And I'll, I'll ask people in our organization, do you think I'm holding myself accountable? Is there something that you're seeing with me that I need to do better, do different? Uh, you've got to be willing to, to hear that criticism from your team and not create an organization where it's just an echo chamber of your thoughts. Uh, in my mind, if you create an echo chamber like that and you're not willing to listen, and that's sometimes really difficult conversations that you have to have, um, then you end up with an organization or you end up as a leader uh, going down a path where all you're doing is listening to yourself. And that's ultimately, I've, I have found in my life, uh, can be very destructive. You're much better out, off having those hard conversations or those uncomfortable conversations so people can compartmentalize and, and, um, and digest something that's very difficult for them or for you uh, to get through. And uh, so I have found quite often as a leader, if, you'll, if you're willing to do that, number one, hold people accountable, but first hold yourself accountable um, and make sure that those are key initiatives that you and your team have agreed on that you're holding yourself accountable to, you've got a laser focus on those items and you're willing to work through the, the, the things that come up in either your personal or professional life uh, to allow you to stay accountable. I tell you, the next one that I struggle with as a leader is communication uh, and communication style. And you may say, that's kind of strange. You know, Zach, you're, you're in a leadership position. I've, I've owned several companies and, and had the benefit of, of selling businesses. So certainly I've been out there having conversations with uh, C-suite folks for a long time in my career. But communication for me is not naturally comfortable. I'm, I'm naturally kind of an introverted person. Um, so even doing this on camera is, um, you know, makes me uncomfortable sometimes and I really have to work at it. Uh, there's probably other leaders out here listening to this or, or folks that are becoming leaders that probably have a, have a similar view. I can tell you what's worked for me is you got to work at it. Uh, you got to work at it over and over and over. I mean, as silly as things, you know, presenting in front of the mirror, presenting to a family member, presenting to a colleague. Uh, all of that has helped me, uh, coach me up and helped me better as a presenter and, and as a leader and as a communicator. 
Um, and I would also say surround yourself with someone that can help you with, with how you communicate and how succinctly you, you communicate. Because um, we all find ourselves, if we get nervous, it's like rapid fire and, and it's almost kind of diarrhea of the mouth, right? I mean, that happens sometimes because your brain is, is trying to keep up with what you're trying to communicate and you're just nervous. Um, sometimes we come across very cold and, and hollow in our body language and how we're communicating. So how do you get comfortable in front of people? How do you get comfortable to make sure that people feel your body language, not just your words? Uh, because if, if, you, if you detach those two items, no matter how great your message is or how concise your message is, it can come across as hollow or, um, or, or, or uh, not land properly. Um, so work at it. Uh, I, I don't think anyone is born as just a natural communicator. I think anyone you see that's a great communicator has worked really hard at it and has practiced at it and has failed at it and has found ways to surround themselves with people and other folks that can help them get better at it. Uh, but for me, it certainly takes a lot of work and a lot of effort. And, uh, but I have found that that work and effort has paid off and I get more and more comfortable as I communicate with folks. So that's kind of the, the personal communication, me outwardly communicating with folks. But then you've got communication styles. Uh, some people love somebody that's uber direct, right? That's going to say, you know, kind of the, the military analogy of, of bluff, bottom line up front. And, you know, just lay it on me. I just want to hear it. And then, and then we'll start working. Um, others see that as being so direct that it's off-putting. They're instantly defensive and, and they're taken aback and, and shut down in a conversation. Um, so you certainly have to understand your audience, uh, who you're communicating with, how best your message is going to land. Because at the end of the day, all communication is about your message being received. And so if you're communicating to somebody that can't take something that direct, then you need to soften your blow a little bit. If it's somebody that only responds to the first you know, 10 words of your communication, you better come out direct. So make sure that you understand how your team wants to be communicated to, understand what's the best way for your team to receive your communication, uh, but also understand internally what's the best way for, for you and what's most comfortable for you and how you communicate. Uh, but at the end of the day, you've got to get your message across quickly, succinctly, uh, correctly, precisely, and, and, you know, if you fail there, no matter what you're communicating is a failure because it's going to fall on deaf ears um, and our folks are going to see it as ambiguous communication and, and, and not be clear and concise on what you're asking of them. So work on those things. Practice. Understand how you should communicate with various members of your team. Be willing to listen and understand how, it's, how, how your communication is, is falling uh, with them or how it's being received by them. Um, and, and be willing to change your communication styles uh, to fit the either individual or the room that you're communicating within. So really another thought on communication is quite often it's the only way you're resolving conflict, right? We're, we're fortunate, I'm blessed, I'm surrounded by people that are very passionate about the work we do, but with passion quite often comes, you know, people that are willing to voice their opinion and, and sometimes very strongly. And you clearly can find yourself in a situation where if you're, if you're not communicating effectively or in the right way, uh, that that passion and in the, in the way when you get worked up or you're trying to uh, dig in, on, in a position um, can create conflict. And so for all of us, we've got to be able to say, you know, how do I separate the passion from uh, somebody that is, um, is confronting somebody about something, because those are two different things. How do I separate the passion from someone just trying to get their, uh, their point across? All of that is uh, different, different ways we communicate and how we handle communication, both being delivered to us and being received by us. So, you know, in closing, I, I would just say, make sure that you're trying to separate someone's passion um, from maybe their communication style and maybe their communication style coupled with their passion can create conflict. But take a moment to try to decouple those items uh, and, and try to resolve, is it truly some sort of conflict or is it just them being passionate about an item and, and you're receiving their communication style differently? Or conversely, they're receiving your communication style differently. So the next item I want to chat about is empowerment versus kind of, you know, being heavy handed in decision making. And, and this one's near and dear to me. When my brother and I, Garrett, started our first company, there's only two of us. 
So, and we were making every decision. Uh, we were basically having to micromanage ourselves, right? And it's very easy when you're an entrepreneur and you start a company that starts with two people and you grow to hundreds of people, um, that that transition is very difficult. You can't grow a business if you're not willing to empower your people. But when you first start a company, quite often you're starting that as a really small group of folks and you're making a lot of those decisions yourself. And so this is something that I've struggled with in my career and I'm sure I've made a lot of missteps. Uh, it's something that I actively work at every day, which is how much of my decision making is me empowering my people because I can't make a million decisions a day. I need lots of people making lots of good decisions every day. And then how often do I have to say, no, 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 we're getting off the rails and, and I got to rein somebody in or we've got to rein in this strategy or we've got to rein in this initiative because it's putting our, our business on a wrong course. Uh, that is a constant battle for me. And I, find my, I have found myself micromanaging people and I have found myself um, maybe giving people too much latitude and too much rein. Uh, both of those can be dangerous in business. And, um, you know, one keeps your business from gro growing effectively because you'll get to a point where you just can't make enough decisions to allow your business to grow. Um, and one can take your business in a direction you don't want it to go. So, may so maybe one item that would help you all, and I know it helps me on, on my delegation authority and, and where I empower versus where maybe I'm coming down strong on an issue, is think of it as a matrix, um, and, and that matrix, it could be, hey, I'm making this decision because I feel like I'm the only one that has all of the information to make the right decision. I'm going to live with that uh, decision and we'll move forward. Um, or, hey, you need to go away and, and come back with some good ideas and then I'll make a decision. Or I would like you to go away and come back and we will collectively, whether it's just you and I or as a team, make a decision. Or, hey, you should just go and, and make a decision here, and I'm empowering you to do that. And uh, you and your team make these decisions um, to, to help put our, our business on the right track. So think, think about all of those tough decisions you're making in a day and maybe throw them into that matrix. And it, it will help you uh, determine maybe where you need to step in or where, where maybe you need to back off a little bit. Uh, I think if you can, can, can compartmentalize it in that way, it'll, you'll, it'll make yourself a better leader. I know it makes me a better leader. I think one of the other topics that's really interesting for me and something I think about on my drives into work or drive home from work is the, the difference between tactical and strategic leadership. And again, having, having started small companies where I'm doing everything tactically versus growing a business that becomes scalable in, in a much larger entity, You've got to be thinking much more strategically. And that's not easy. I mean, there's, you know, with, within a, a week or a day or within an hour, you've got to shift your brain between maybe tactical and strategic. Um, I found for me what works is, you know, sit down and really make sure you're fleshing out those, those key strategic initiatives uh, that are your, your North Star. Uh, because if you find yourself uh, getting hung up in the tactical or the day-to-day -day grind or down in the weeds on some issue, it, it really helps to pull back and reflect on those kind of true north strategic items and say, hey, are all these tactical items that I'm digging into aligned with, with that strategy or not? Um, and, then, and then ask yourself introspectively, am I being too tactical? Which means I'm probably being heavy handed with my team um, because that means I'm, I'm helping them or I'm making a lot of those decisions. And our business really needs me to be more strategic and let them run with those more tactical decisions. Um, or, or am I spending too much time on strategy and, and, and separating myself maybe from the team and thinking too aloof or too far down the road uh, when we have some real challenges that people need our help today solving? Uh, so ask yourself that every day. It's something when I'm driving to work, probably every day or every other day, I'm thinking about that. Is this is today, do I need to be a, tact a tactician today? Or do I need to put my strategy hat on today and be thinking about a year or two or three years down the road? Uh, take the time to be reflective. Uh, if you can't do it on your commute, if you work from home, do it on your walk to your home office. Do it at your workout in the morning and, um, and, and try to think about those things. Because I think if you do, it'll set your day on the right path. And you'll realize, hey, I haven't gone 30 days now being tactical or 30 days now being strategic. Uh, I need to take a break and I, and I need to shift my focus for a day or two or for an hour or two. So think about that in your leadership style and, and how you're leading your team.
really the next item I want to talk about is, for me, I'll call it warm versus cold leadership styles. And I've worked for lots of different folks. I've worked with lots of different folks um, that have very different styles. I mean, everyone from the person who wants to give you a hug every day that is just fills a room with energy um, to the individual that is uh, very distant and aloof uh, and, and, and tight and pent up. Um, and I've seen folks at very senior levels in organizations uh, having both personality types or a blend of those personality types. This is something I struggle with uh, a little bit every day as well. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, I'm, I'm more introverted than I am extroverted, and I've had the fortune of being in a lot of leadership positions. Uh, but, but how do you balance being, being cold or being warm, and how do you apply warmness, and when is it needed? How do you read an individual or a room or a team to say, hey, it's time for me to be the cheerleader uh, or it's time for me to be the hammer? And, and those are very different reactions that you have to have. And I, and I know I've certainly made mistakes in my career on reading a room inappropriately or, or uh, pushing too hard when I needed to be the cheerleader or I needed to be warmer. Um, and I know there's times where maybe I've been too soft or too warm when I needed to be harder and colder in a scenario, and I'm really doing someone a disservice by being too warm and, and maybe placating to, um, to something that they needed and, and not allowing that person to develop and understand that, hey, it's not always about being warm and, and it's not always about being cold. It's about finding that right mix um, based on what you're encountering in the day or the decision you're trying to make uh, or where an individual or a team is in their progression. Um, the other thing I'd like to mention is, is you have to balance um, your, your experience and in, in relationship with an individual. You know, you have to try to, to address, address people and adjust, um, but you also have to be pure and true to yourself, right? I, you know, I don't want you uh, to, to misunderstand that you should just be two different people, right? Uh, you have to be authentic, and if you're not authentic, that's the first thing that people will see through. Um, and I think instantly you'll, you'll shut people down. Um, but, but if you struggle with this, and I know I do on, on being too warm or being too cold at times, um, you know, maybe you could give me your thoughts or opinions on how you work through this, because I know it's, it's something that, that I have to work through every day as a leader. So the next item I want to talk about is really the, the kind of view I have sometimes as a leader when um, quite often you'll find yourself in a position, whether it's the you know, the head coach of a team or the captain of a team or, or the CEO of a business, uh, sometimes you'll find it's lonely at the top and you're, you're sitting there struggling with decisions you're trying to make that affect a lot of people. And, and sometimes there's no one else to turn to to have that conversation with. You know, I've caught myself a lot of times, you know, you're, you're working out or you're in the shower thinking about something and, and you can quite often find yourself in a place of loneliness as a leader. Um, I would implore you, uh, try, try not to let that uh, overcome you and attack you, um, because you know, if you go down a path of loneliness, it can really grab hold of you. Um, quite often, what I have found that works for me is, is when, I, when I find myself doing that or feeling lonely, I need to engage more with my team. Um, it's, it's almost uh, a reaction, a visceral reaction that this loneliness creeps in uh, when you pull back from your team a little bit too much uh, and you feel like the pressure of the business or the pressure of the quarter or the pressure of the month is bearing down on you, quite often I have found just embrace the people around you. They'll, they'll help you navigate through it. Maybe not that specific issue, but, but there's, there's almost certainly a slew of issues that are, that are creating that pressure, that are kind of driving that loneliness as a leader. Uh, and I've found that if you just let some of those things go and let them out or let them get resolved by people around you, um, that, that quite often you'll feel that loneliness kind of, kind of just resolve itself. It starts to disappear. Uh, that weight that feels heavy starts to feel lighter. Uh, and then ultimately you kind of come through that and, and you go, man, why, why, was I, why was I so down on myself or why did I feel so much pressure in that situation? Um, when it actually resolved itself relatively easily. I just needed to, to embrace the people around me, engage with the people around me, uh, and tactically attack those items. And once I did that, uh, I realized that they resolved and we got beyond them. And, and you look back on them and say, that really wasn't that big an issue. 
that at the time felt very crushing. So uh, please think about that. If, if you're lonely as a leader or you feel lonely or you feel like the pressure is getting too much, uh, take stock of where you are. Take stock of all the great things you and your team have done. Um, and remember, your team is there, right? You can bounce things off of them. Uh, they, they quite often have great ideas, and, and you're, usually they're the ones that are going to help you through something like that. Well, for anyone who is listening, I, I hope maybe you gained some insights on some of the things that, that I've learned in my career, some things I still struggle with today, uh, and some things maybe you're struggling with today, and, and maybe some, some items that would help you, you work through some of, some of those struggles. Um, it's not easy to get on camera for me and, and, and talk about those things that, that I find difficult in my life and challenges in my life every day. Um, but, but I can tell you, when, when you get those things uh, out in the light, it usually makes them uh, much easier to deal with and it makes them easier to understand. Um, and so in, on this season of the Integrity Podcast, we're going to have this theme of leadership kind of intertwined in all of our discussions. Because I can guarantee you, if I'm having these um, these challenges and these issues as a leader, there's probably some of you out listening that are as well. And so, so, so let's shine some light on them and, and let's discuss them. And let's understand how other folks are, are dealing with some of these same challenges. Because uh, I can assure you, the way I'm doing it, it's probably not perfect. And I will learn something from everyone that I'm around um, that is having some of these same struggles and, and some of these same conversations. Uh, so please go on the journey with us. Uh, should be a fun second season. Uh, thanks to everybody who listened into season one. And if you haven't, maybe go back and listen to some of those great episodes, uh, some fantastic people we interviewed uh, over the last several months. And we're looking forward to speaking to you again this year.